What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm at least attempting to contend for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And today, I'm talking about private confession. I know. Cue the strings, cue the orchestra, cue the wind instruments, and from mainline American Protestants, cue the rock band, all singing in unison. That's too Catholic. It's incredibly Catholic. But what you mean is that's too Roman Catholic, and no, it's not. Now, let me tell you a little story, and then we'll get into private confession and absolution. 501 years ago, well, longer ago than that, um, there was a little monk in Germany named Martin Luther. Martin Luther's conscience was sorely vexed uh, by all of what he felt would be the sins that kept him from heaven. Either he was going straight to hell or he was going to rot for millions upon millions of years in purgatory because he was a sinner. Now, part of this is because the Roman Catholic Church at the time wasn't teaching a proper doctrine on justification, and Luther felt that God was angry with him. Now, Luther would go to confession for hours and hours and hours, and he would leave not trusting. And then he'd think of more sins and go back and confess for hours and hours on end. And sometimes Luther would beat himself, scourge his own back, or lay prostrate in the snow almost freezing to death. Later in his life, Luther would report that these monkish activities almost killed him and were the reason for his poor health as he got older. Fast forward to the Lutheran Reformation. The writing of the small catechism, a book of instruction for children into the basics of Christianity. Six chief parts were included in this. The Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, Baptism, Confession and Absolution, and the Lord's Supper. It's amazing, don't you think? For someone who was trying to change the church, as Protestants seem to understand the Reformation, that Luther would hang on to confession and absolution. Now, in a general sense, confession and absolution in the Lutheran church is different from that of confession and absolution in the Roman Catholic church, in that the absolution is contingent upon some sort of penance. You confess your sins to the priest, the priest tells you what Christ has done, what you must do, and only then. Maybe some peace <laughs> for your conscience. Lutheran con confession and absolution, Christian confession and absolution. You confess your sins to the pastor, and the pastor tells you what Christ has done for you in his suffering, death, resurrection, all credited to you as righteousness when you were buried with him into that death and raised with him in his resurrection to newness of life at your baptism. You hear from the pastor, from God himself, the holy absolution won for you by the all-availing sacrifice of Christ's body and blood on the cross, given to you in your baptism. This is peace for the troubled conscience, and a little frozen monk out in the snow decided it was worth hanging on to. So what I want to do is go through Lutheran private confession, and to do that, I have my trusty Lutheran service book. Now, Lutheran service book is a phenomenal resource, and you don't have to be Lutheran to have this in your house. Uh, so I've turned to individual confession and absolution. And you'll see there's some red, uh, there's some black, and there's some bold black. So uh, a guide, a simple guide to anything, um, I was trying to say rubric and liturgical at the same time, it almost came out rhetorical. <laughs> I'm going to get slammed for that. Uh, a guide to doing anything liturgical is to do the red, say the black. So that's kind of how we're going to do this. So let's just kind of jump right in for the sake of time, and then we'll address a couple of issues and questions maybe you'll have at the end. Otherwise, there's always a comment section below. And if you do like the content, be sure to like, 
subscribe and definitely hit the notification bell because we all know I'm sporadic with my uploads and you're going to want to be notified when I put something up. So uh, you'll have to forgive me. I just broke my glasses. Otherwise, I'd pop those babies on, but I just broke them. So um, in preparation, uh, you may prepare yourself by meditating on the Ten Commandments. It's a phenomenal way to start. Uh, Although you might already, if you're desperate enough to go to private confession, you probably already know what commandments you've been breaking. But still, uh, you may also pray one penitential psalm, one of the penitential psalms, recommended psalms, and Christians, we should be in the Psalter every day, but recommended psalms, 6, 32, 38, 51, 51, 51, 51. Psalms 102, 130, or 143. If you are not burdened with particular sins, do not trouble yourself or search for or invent other sins, thereby turning confession into a torture. Uh, instead, med mention one or two sins that you know and let that be enough. And this, uh, Luther, would do, Luther would invent sins because he felt like he hadn't been penitent enough or he hadn't repented enough or he wasn't sorry enough or whatever excuse he made trying to merit salvation. Uh, so Luther comes round and says, look, if there's nothing really burdening your conscience, just mention one or two things and move on. This isn't a chore. This is a gift. So, uh, when you are ready, kneel and say, Pastor, please hear my confession and pronounce forgiveness in order to fulfill God's will. Pastor says, proceed. I, a poor sinner, plead guilty before God of all sins all sins. I have lived as if God did not matter, and as if I mattered most. My Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let his love have its way with me. And so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt, and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. Absolutely true. The biggest idol that we make not is not of gold or or, or anything like that. It, this <laughs> this is the biggest idol that we make. We live our lives every day as if God didn't matter and we mattered most. So this is a brilliant just summary of every way that we fail God on a daily basis. And it's healthy Christian practice to be honest with ourselves about that and to have a confessor, someone we can confess to that not only holds us accountable, but also someone who holds that special office of the keys to unlock paradise for us and to preach God's salvation and forgiveness to us on Christ's account, not by our own works, worthiness, or merit. If you wish, this is read again, to confess specific sins that trouble you, continue as follows. Black. What troubles me particularly is that. This is where you have the freedom to use your own words. This is where you get to stray away from. And don't make it all flowery or try to sound like you're more sorry than you really are. In, in ancient Lutheranism, there's, and I wish I could find it, but there's a beautiful prayer about how we can't even confess with any semblance of real awe, terror, or reverence for God. <laughs> that when, even when we confess, we're not confessing right or with enough passion. I wish I could find it, uh, and I'm still going to keep digging for it. So, confess whatever you have done against the commandments of God according to your own place in life. The pastor may gently question or instruct you not to pry or judge, but to assist in self-examination. That's the fear, isn't it? That we're confessing to a man, and that man is going to judge us. If that man, that pastor, is worth his salt according to his calling, there's not going to be any sort of judgment or condemnation. None. He might probe a little, and he might offer some instruction and, and some encouragement along the way, especially your first time. Um, and we'll talk about my first time in a little bit. Uh, but he's not judging you. He's never going to judge you. This is God's shepherd to you. This is a gift. Then conclude by saying, I am sorry for all of this and ask for grace. I want to do better. The pastor says, God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. 
And amen, we learn from the catechism, means yes, yes, it shall be so. Then the pastor will ask, do you believe that my forgiveness is God's forgiveness? The only biblical answer is yes. The pastor then says, let it be done for you as you believe. The pastor places his hand on the head of the penitent and says, In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The pastor may speak additional scripture passages to comfort and strengthen the faith of those who have great burdens of conscience or are sorrowful and distressed. The pastor concludes, Go in peace. Amen. You may remain and say a prayer of thanksgiving, and again, Lutheran service book suggests Psalm 30, Psalm 31, Psalm 32, uh, Psalm 34, Psalm 103, or uh, Psalm 118 are uh, some appropriate psalms of thanksgiving. And this is the major difference between Lutheran confession and absolution and what Protestants think confession and absolution is. You confess, the pastor declares you're forgiven, and the beautiful go in peace. Now, that's important, uh, because peace is what you're looking for. Uh, For any of us who have gone, and I've certainly gone to private confession, uh, I was looking for peace. I was really upset. I had done something that I knew I should not have done, and I needed to hear those words. Those are Christ's words, and those are Christ's words for you. And he has entrusted his pastors to speak those words on his behalf. Remember when Christ sent out the 72, and he said, if they hear it from you, they've heard it from me. So only those who are sent have the authority to wield Christ's words. And we know that Christ gave those words specifically the unlocking and locking of the gates of forgiveness of sins in John chapter 20, after he's risen from the dead and he speaks to these men who ran away from him, who betrayed him, who abandoned him, who couldn't even muster up the nerve to watch him be crucified, except for John. You betray your best friend like that. There's going to be some guilt. And your best friend comes back from the dead afterwards. <gasps> oh, expletive, we're in trouble. So the first words Jesus speaks to the men who betrayed him, who abandoned him, and who denied him. Peace be with you. Why did he say peace be with you? Because that peace had been achieved. And he spoke it to them. And then he breathed on them. And said, receive the Holy Spirit. Whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whoever sins you do not forgive, they are not forgiven. This is called the office of the keys. And Luther's catechism is beautiful in laying this out for compromands and for Lutherans to understand the biblical basis of the office of the keys. The binding and loosing, as it's referenced in other places in the gospel, is not what mainline American Protestants have turned it into, where they're like, I bind you, Satan! Great. The word you are actually looking for is loose, by the way, uh, because you don't want to bind Satan to anyone or anything, so (laughs) golf clap, Protestants. (laughs) So, confession and absolution... The office of the keys, pastors have this authority given to them by Christ to speak his words as Christ himself would say, repentance and the forgiveness of sins shall be proclaimed in my name. This is a beautiful gift to the church. This is something that Christ calls his pastors to do. Is this an obligation to go on a regular basis and confess your sins to your pastor? But it's there. And in ancient Lutheranism, if we can call it that, the ritual was to go to Vespers on Saturday evening, confess, go to Matins on Sunday morning, the Mass, go home, have lunch, come back for Vespers again to honor the Sabbath 
day, the Sabbath day beginning at sundown the day before and ending at sundown the day of. So that's when I go to confession. I don't always go, but when I feel the need to go, I typically really, truly strive to go on Saturday evening so that I am prepared to receive the Mass, the Eucharist, the Lord's Supper on Sunday. Lutherans, we're really good at confession and absolution when it's in a corporate setting and we just kind of bleh, the words out, Most merciful God, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve to present any throne of punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them, I sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, the poor sinful sinner. See how by rote that is? It's pathetic, isn't it? The beauty of those words, and we take, even in corporate confession, we take them for granted. Lutherans get you to confession. It is a gift given to you by Christ that you can speak unspeakable things to your pastor, and the only thing your pastor knows how to do is to say back to you, your sins are forgiven. And when he uses the words, I forgive you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, his forgiveness is Christ's forgiveness, because to those who are sent, Jesus says, if they've heard it from you, they've heard it from me. Confession and absolution is a beautiful tradition in the church. It's one that Luther, even though he wrestled with how awful and what a torture confession was it made the cut why because luther wasn't throwing the baby out with the bathwater. that's why because he was reforming the church back into what it had always been before the usurpation of the bishop of rome and before the usurpation of that papal authority i hope this has been helpful if you have any questions about confession and absolution i can certainly try to answer them uh, meet me down in the comment section. We'll talk. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys have asked a lot of questions in the comment section, and I think they're great questions, and some of them I do intend to get to in the future. Thanks for tuning in to 1517 Films. If there's any topic you would like to see me talk about, comment section. If there's anything you disagree with me about, comment section. If you want to drop me a line and say, hey, dude, you're really long-winded, comment section. Just remember, sarcastic comment is met with a sarcastic answer and sometimes i'm really bad i've read every single comment but i don't always have the opportunity when i'm reading them to comment back i really got to get better at that thanks for tuning in to 1517 films we look forward to the, uh see what there i go we again i look forward to speaking with you again in the future i've got several videos up here and i'm looking forward to them uh but there's some technical stuff some stuff i need to build uh, some time that I'm going to need, some angles that I'm going to want to get. I'm really going uh, for quality over quantity at this point, but I've got a lot of ideas. I look forward to sharing with them in the future. Uh, until next time, may God richly bless you and the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.